All right, hello and welcome back to Ashkabat Cats. Let's play that. Today we're taking a look at Gunlock from by Taito for the arcade. And that's right, Gunlock is a vertical sides a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up. And a pretty sweet looking one of that. All right, no need for an intro screen. I'm hyped already. Oh, wow, that is cool. All right. So we could press regular shot like some sort of loser. But we can also press B shot to lock on, I guess. You can lock on? This just blows my mind. Whoa, okay. So then you can lock on to multiple things at once. Can you shoot these ships in the, in the background? I guess you cannot. Okay, cool, cool. And then you've got targets coming from on screen. You got targets coming from the background. You got everything. Things are exploding around. You got masteroids, the messy path. You got things to lock on. Is there a bomb? There's no bomb. That's good because bombs are the easy way out. Man, this game has everything I'd want in a shoot 'em up. Move over, Dodon Pachi. I think I found my new favorite shoot 'em up. That is, of course, premature to say. And I don't know that any shoot 'em up can beat out Pro Gear, am I right? But uh, well, let's let's find out. I gotta say, out of all the games I've played, this is one of the few that makes, like, an amazing first impression. A lot of games make a good first impression, and after you play, you, you get kind of more attuned to them, and attuned to their quirks, and you, you just ultimately come to love them. But this game, it just comes right out, and it's like, you will love me. And it's like, I mean, they're right, but it's just a little, it's a little much. Not, not really a little much, it's more just impressive. So, uh, is, is anything really happening here? So, I mean, we're going through, we're killing stuff. Uh, is anything changing? Any power-ups or anything? Not really. Ah, there we go. <laughs> and, uh, let's see. So, the targeting range is fixed. So, you're gonna have to get right up on the boss if you want to lock them onto Oblivion. Uh... Interesting. Now, is there a health bar or lives? I'm too scared to check. Whoa. And not even a problem. Okay. No, there must be some sort of life system or some sort of guard system, because I know I got hit at least a few dozen times. Oh, interesting. Your power-ups, your power shots are color-coded. So... Oh, interesting. Okay, and then if you miss, then <laughs> your shots just go nowhere. Oh, maybe it is only one shot, one kill. Maybe I've been doing pretty good then. Uh, oh, wow. So if you shoot the uh, power-up thing, then it powers down <laughs> or something. So I guess the moral of the story is don't just hold down A button. Oh, by the way, you don't even have to tap. You just hold down A button and you're like golden. This game, it's like it knows everything you want in a game and it just delivers. It's got a cool concept. It's got a bunch of bullets, but like... A bunch of bullets in a fair way. This is this is hard to overstate, but games back then, they didn't know what bullet hell was. They didn't necessarily care about you. They just cared about one thing, and that was how many credits are in your wallet, and how do we part them from yourself. But what this game is asking is like, how do we make the coolest arcade game ever? And unfortunately, I'm not sure that I've heard of this one. I mean, this might be another no-name main game, in which case that would be incredibly unfortunate, because this game is actually pretty cool. There's like cool sprites although I wonder if it got lost in maybe some sort of wave of 90 shoot 'em ups I mean there were a lot of them in this time period and honestly that was when shoot 'em ups were really starting to get good I mean <laughs> we're moving along past the days of Galaga here oh my gosh that's so cool but it does speaking of Galaga it does have echoes of Galaga where like in Galaga you could shoot the enemies as they came in and went into formation and so this game kind of has shades of that where you can destroy the enemies in the background before they even get there. And also, too, Afterburner had, like, the lock-on with the missiles, although Afterburner was a little bit different in that the missiles were essentially the only way to kill uh, enemy ships. I mean, yeah, you had your Vulcan cannon, but yeah, I'd like to see you try destroying somebody with a Vulcan cannon. I, I don't think you can do it. Uh, interesting, these colored spheres. Instinctively, I know to collect them, but I don't know what they do. Oh, yikes. Anyway, but, um, 
out well okay afterburner had like such a satisfying lock-on feature where you just kind of lock on to an enemy you press the button and that's it no more no more input required you knew they were as dead as a doornail might as well order a cemetery a funeral for them already in this game it's almost the same thing now it does seem like a few things take more hits to destroy but that's more like bosses and it's more like things that probably should take more than a few hits to destroy but I always appreciated that about Galaga, where you could destroy a whole bunch of the enemies beforehand, even before the action started. Now, I mean, technically you don't get the best of scores for that, but I mean, if you play Galaga for the score, you are just crazy. I mean, yeah, you gotta do your best in those special stages, but I mean, honestly, you play Galaga, you get as far as you can. Because, I mean, that is a game that... Oh, wow! That's cool! So they're participating in some sort of interstellar space war, and so we're just gonna help out! Just kind of pepper them in. Now, granted, those are like huge battleships. I don't think we actually did anything. Uh, I guess those are our side because we cannot target them. Ooh, boy. Is this some sort of plot where we're fighting aliens or we're fighting mankind's worst enemy? More other mankind. And... Oh, weird. That's actually a fairly easy pattern, which leads me to believe that this boss has more than a few phases. Although, like... The people who made this game, let's let's not get things too out of hand. Like, yeah, they're nice people and they know how to make a good game, but they're not going to make it completely easy. They know that the best place to be is right in the guy's face, because then you can lock on on all of his doodads and send him to oblivion. But what they're going to do is they're going to make that the most dangerous of places to be. In fact, he's going to like explode or something right now. Oh no. Okay. Hey, locking on. That's cheap. Cheater! Cheater! Yikes. Some of my own medicine. I don't like it. It's bitter. And, uh, just some more of this. I don't even know if I'm destroying him, but it feels so good. It feels like I'm making progress, and that's that's a tricky thing to do in a shoot 'em up Like, a lot of shoot 'em ups you can put a lot of enemies on screen, you can make them all explode, and, like, yeah, you can make the explosions feel cool, but there's a whole art to making the player feel like they're actually accomplishing something. I mean, it's one thing to just lay waste to an entire squadron of enemy ships, but like, you can do that, but you can also be feeling like you're pretty much reliving the myth of Sisyphus, where just not much is happening. But this game, this game really has progression down, and I think part of it is that you're constantly moving to new areas, and you've got new enemies to destroy. Like, if you think about the enemy variety, I mean, okay, maybe if you're a cynical, dead-at-heart person, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, there's only three different actual ship designs, they're all just recolors. But it's like, even the recolors, I kind of appreciate that. But it's like, check it out, we're in clouds, we're in, like, lower Earth atmosphere? It's like, we started out in space, it's like, we've come a long way, and it's been, like, what, a stage? Two stages? I mean... Some of them, like, well, okay, Galaga, well, that's not exactly a fair comparison. You can stay in space for, like, the entire frigging time, and nothing ever changes. Although, Galaga, I mean, you do eventually feel like you've made progress, because eventually the enemy uh, formations kind of change drastically. But really, the most progress I ever feel in Galaga is when I get to level 20 and I get, like, the shield as a uh, level indicator, and that's when I'm like, oh dang, things have fundamentally changed. That's a lie, of course, things have not fundamentally changed. Things never change in Galaga. And then we're just flying over this, oh cool, so it's like a flying city, like Lapida, a castle in the sky. Honestly, I kind of regret watching that vi uh, movie as a child with, and just like, being in sort of a binge for uh, Miyazaki movies, like Spirited Away. But, in reality, I wasn't able to like, fully appreciate each video for its own, like, it's each movie for its own sort of merits. It kind of became like the slur of Miyazaki. And, I mean, well, just, just as evidence to this day, I don't think I could tell you the plot of that story. I recently rewatched watched uh, Porco Rosso, of course, recently being like a year or so. And it was, it was a much different experience watching that as an adult versus a kid. So, I mean... Just all these things. I mean, it wasn't bad. It wasn't like one of those, like, don't don't meet your heroes sort of deal. It was more like a, like, your dad tells you, it's like, hey, I know you like Ernest Hemingway now, kid, but wait till you're 60. Then you'll love him in a completely different way. And then you're like, yeah, whatever. You don't know anything, dad. But then you do it, and you're like, wow. 
This, he was right. Maybe my dad was right about other things. It's a shame it took 60 years for his intelligence to manifest. That sort of deal. And, uh, all right. Well, you know, at first I was saying this game is fairly, like, nice with its enemy shot patterns, but now I'm beginning to think it's just a little... Not anything. Okay. Okay. Prior to those landmines, nothing this guy dishing out is dishing out could even have a hope of a prayer of a chance of hurting me. But now that uh, those enemy mines have entered the fray, I still don't know entirely how do I handle those. And I mean, that giant wave pattern, like, it looks intimidating. But the secret is just back off. Okay, never mind. We're down... Three continue. Oh, no wonder the power up shrunk because they were in a box. Wow. And to think that first stage, I couldn't tell if you could take multiple shots. And now I'm just tossing in credits like they're going out of style. Jeez. Okay, fine. There's a bit of bark to this dog. Uh, I guess with the mines, you have to kind of stay in one place and kind of concentrate fire. Wow. That is the most urgent sounding game over screen I've seen in a while. I mean, nothing much happens. Oh, yikes. It just kind of makes that ding noise that instantly captures your attention. I mean, it's like, I know you just died in the arcade game, but it's like, ding, ding, ding. It's like, no, your, your attention is really required. And it's so weird. Like, you die in an arcade game, it's like your first instinct is to just kind of disengage. Just kind of like... Take a step back, clear your head, and think about, is this worth wasting my next week's allowance to play more of this game? The answer is typically yes, but this game, it kind of ding, ding, dings you, and you're just like, how could I ever have doubted you? And you're just instantly already pushing the quarter into the slot. It's almost like a Pavlovian response. It's like ding, ding, ding. It's like, what? where did all my quarters go? Oh, man, these little tanks, they can't fly, though, so I don't know why I'm even bothering to bomb them. Honestly, it was there. And that's... Honestly... <laughs> that might be half the reason I do things in video games. It's not even always because I'm enjoying a video game. It's more just like, it was there. I could, I could do it. That is a neat little touch, though. Did you see the hatch that opened into the ground? How you could, like, kind of see through and then things were super scaling? Then... That is a nice little touch. And something that probably took, like, maybe... 20 minutes, I'd say, to get right. But those are 20 minutes they could have been working on something else. But no, I'm glad they kind of went through. And Well, okay, I was going to say it's like one of those things that the developer tosses in that's cool, but you only ever see once. Well, they did it again. And I'm pretty sure that's foreshadowing. Not this stage. Probably next stage will actually be going into their enemy base. Although I got to give this game props for, like, having the story arc of a of Gundam. Where it's like, okay, we start out in space, like any proper Gundam should. And then we go to the atmosphere, because that's kind of a thing Gundam does. And then we fight through. And then, typically Gundam, you go back to space for the final epic finale. So, if I was to guess what's going to happen next, we're going to go full Gundam, go back to space, and have an epic finale. Until then, though, we're just going to hang around here and destroy everything. Yeah, initially I was complaining that the shot patterns were nothing but they are getting to be something not much but like 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 i feel like i could actually die i feel like i have to actually be paying attention now i mean i won't but versus like before where i felt more or less completely invincible so i gotta really give this game double props it has the smoothest difficulty curve like a lot of video game shoot 'em ups like you start playing and like Okay, stage one, it lets you have your fun. Stage two, it just completely brutalizes you. It's like, hey, you thought you were good at this game? Nope. Give me your lunch money, kid. And you're like, but I need that for lunch. And they're like, go hungry. Play video games. All right. Another boss. Let's see how... Oh, jeez. Hey, that is... I mean, it's one thing to have the homing shots, but it's an entirely another thing to have the homing shots be the exact same color as my homing shots. That's unacceptable. <sighs> I thought it was the homing shots. That was the danger. I was paying attention to the homing shots because they were dangerous, but no. It was your everyday space mines. Oh, interesting. So, well, not, not that I'll be able to tell now, but I think as you collect power-ups, you actually make your homing shot stronger. Oh, I guess on the bottom it tells you. 
but you have to realize, like, this game does not let up on the action. Like, it may not be overwhelming action, but at no point in time does the game just go like, eh, have a breather, take a look at the bottom of your screen, admire that. No, it's like constantly like, hey, there's another round of shots at you, and it's like, yeah, the shots may not be too much to deal with, but they're constantly there. And I guess sometimes that's all that matters, that you're like, that you show up every day, not that you are a superstar player. Because again, you can't hike the ball to the million dollar quarterback without it first going through the hands of your 100k center. Never mind, center's a skill position, that's 200k probably. Area 5? Whoa! I'm gonna be honest, I actually lost track of how many stages it's been. Have I fought four bosses? Wow. Now that's how you know you're playing a good game when like, you just, you just stop paying attention to that you've been playing a good game and that like, you just play the game. The game and you become one. I mean, Darius, it's like, okay, I could always feel like a sort of friction. I could always maintain my ego while playing Darius, but this game, this game has now become an extension of myself. I can feel my spaceship moving, and when I die, it causes me true pain. That's, of course, an exaggeration, but I still don't want to get hit. Yikes. Those buildings in the background, they look like they could hurt you. But again, this is the er, mid-90s, uh, probably mid-90s before polygons had been seriously invented yet. And so, nope, no, no crashing into buildings today. Although, did you see how many sprite layers were in those buildings? That was actually pretty, pretty darn good. So, while this may not be polygonal, they're getting pretty darn close. And, uh, okay, nothing, nothing doing, pal. You're gonna have to try better if you wanna kill me. I mean, I know you will, and in about three seconds, I'll probably be overwhelmed and die. Well, somebody called me Mr. Adamus, because I predicted my own destruction. And, uh, life. L does not stand for life. But some in some shooter games, it does. This shooter game, yo, yo, I'll, I'll give it credit. It's something sort of underappreciated. Is like... Being able to feel powerful, even with your default shot, yet somehow being able to make your more advanced shots feel worth it. So in this game, like, your original shot, like, you're not necessarily... Okay, that was just... That was just rude. I mean... That was just, like, a huge smattering. There was no pattern. The pattern was just, fuck you. Okay. Another boss. I was just starting to enjoy... Okay, this that had a pattern. Not an entirely agreeable pattern, but a pattern, nonetheless. What? what? But he, he charged me with the wrong side. This guy's a cheater. But anyway, even your default shot feels pretty darn good to work with. But then, haha, I know your attack patterns. Now you're gonna attack with the other side. <laughs> but even your basic shot, feel pretty good. And through, through, through. Oh. Usually you can go into the corner and that's like a safe zone, but nope. This game's like, you're going to suffer. If you can't master basic pattern recognition, then you are just going to suffer your way through this. Oh, that's cool. So there's even like a bit of environmental damage. <sighs> they come back at you. But they don't come back at you with like a pattern you can do deal with. See? <laughs> They're just so janky with like the sinusoidal path. Not even a sinusoidal path. That's like some other helix or some sort of shape. Okay, I think what you're supposed to do is charge him and then make your escape back. Or just keep responding and then kill him with attrition. Don't tell me this is the final boss. We have to go back to space. Ooh, Area 6, the end of the deep layer. Of course, that also sounds like the end of the D player. So it's like, what's your rank in this game? D. It's like, well, then it's the end of you, pal. Wow. It just, just ding, ding, as soon as I die. But it's like, nope, the game's trained me. I got my quarters at the ready. Got all my quarters lined up. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. It's been a while since I've been in an arcade. Other than this game, of course. Uh, you, you'd have to, like, 
where would you store your quarters? That was always an interesting question to deal with. Where would you store your quarters? Now you can store your quarters on the machine itself, but I think the pro strat would be to keep your quarters in some sort of bag. That way, because because if you dump all your quarters on the actual arcade cabinet, like some sort of Neanderthal, then all it takes is one one too intense bump and grind, and then all your hard-earned quarters are on... They're not gone, but they're on the floor, and I mean, do you really want to go and down them? Actually, yeah, wasn't it stuff like Chuck E. Cheese's? Like, they give you a little token cup? And so, I mean, yeah, they're obviously ripping you off by making you buy tokens, which cannot be re-exchanged for actual people money. But at the very least, they give you a cup. They'd be cool about it. I forget if they'd want you to return the cup or not. Oh yeah, that's right, and they'd always have a hole in the bottom, so you couldn't use them for drinking. I mean, not that you'd really want to use someone's old token cup for a drink. Although, yeah, wow. That'd be, like, quite a bit of old-school hipster retro arcade cred. Just have, like, one of those cups fill up the bottom with some sort of putty. I'd say Sugru, but I don't know that Sugru is food safe. And then plug up the hole, and you've got your own, uh... Retro Cup, I guess. Why not? Oh, man. Why not just include it with a copy of The Simpsons, which was the best game that they ever had in the Chuck E. Cheese's. I am assuming, of course, everyone's Chuck E. Cheese was the same. Oh, and Hy Hydro Thunder. Hydro Thunder. That is a game that, honestly, did not have any really good home ports. I mean, yeah, okay, there is the Dreamcast, but, like, even then, it wasn't quite what you want, I think. Well, okay. Maybe it's because the Dreamcast version, it feels so empty because there's no, like, speakers right behind your ear yelling out, Hydro Thunder! It's just kind of your TV screen, and then it's like, huh, this experience was not quite what it was. Well, back to the standard shot. Although, again, I don't necessarily feel bad, and wow, that is quite the upgrade, though. <laughs> Yeah, I think this game, like, your standard shot, like, it doesn't make the actual bullets themselves any more or less powerful, but what it does is it makes them wider, which means you can have more shots on screen, and so in that way, then it makes it more effective. I wonder if that's kind of the secret. Wow. Pre I thought, like, the enemy shot patterns would get more difficult, but no, just the enemies themselves <laughs> are getting difficult, and everyone wants to rush into me and get a piece of me. It's not even really fair at this point. Okay, boss or next session? Is this the final boss also? Oh, yikes! <laughs> I was too busy sightseeing to notice that the boss battle had started. <laughs> Alright. Touche game. Touche. Alright, what do we got here? Oh, mines, my favorite. The one thing you can't lock on in just cheese. Okay, wow. You know, that was a lot of shots, but it's not actually that difficult. Which leads me to believe that this is only phase one. Oh man, I'm gonna run out of credits. This, this series is gonna be the end of me. Alright, and... Okay. Oh, weird. One of those, you're more damaged if you move, sort of boss attacks. Oh my gosh, okay. Now we're starting to layer boss attacks. It's like they are they are serious here. But I'm serious too. Oh. Oh, I see your lasers regenerate over time. And so that's what that was. I thought it was like sort of a Panzer Dragoon where it's like maybe if you lock on to five things simultaneously, then uh Oh wow. Do your lasers regenerate all at once if you manage to hold off on a second? I can't, I can't tell because the game is moving so fast. Oh, I see. So, so random pressing your lasers, there's, there's a more effective way of shooting them out. Okay. If that was the final boss, that was the lamest final boss I've ever seen, which leads me to believe that there is another stage. Of course, as I've been saying this whole time, we're going to space. Releasing infinite. You know, it'll be hilarious if this game kind of went on a loop, went full Cho Ren Cha, and it's like, the end of the final stage is the beginning of the first, and it's like, welcome to Sisyphus, pal. Oh, yikes. 
Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So look at the background. You kind of can't because it's moving so fast. But that is actually very pretty. <laughs> and then it pauses and you can see all, all of it. There's not terribly much to see, but you gotta respect designers who would, like, spend their hearts and souls working on this background thing that, like, not only will people not see, the whole idea is that people don't see it. Although, wow. They were talking about infinitely, and it's like, a lot of games, it's like, I kind of chuckle and say, oh yeah, infinitely. You mean like the game's gonna play infinitely, but wow. Look at those, look at those houses. They just go on infinitely. Actually, the aesthetic is really reminding me of the big O, that old anime with like, the Megaton Punch where he rears back on the lever and then he slams it forward and it's like, oh man, that always just has such a guttural kick to it. And it just seems like it'd be so satisfying. It's like, okay, I want one of those as an arcade game. Now that reminds me, okay, there is this weird Wonderland, which is like a nickel arcade game. At, or it's a nickel arcade. And so they kind of, like, it's a nickel arcade. They got to save costs somewhere. So they always had like weirder games. But they had this like weird Japanese game, which is weirder than most, where the entire control was two levers. And then they kind of, they're on the same rounded axis. And so they can actually slam into each other. And so the whole idea is you'd play all these games and the levers would control your characters or some other darn thing on screen, but like you could slam them into each other. So if you're actually stronger than the other guy, you could just uh, completely overpower them, which was always a useful fact when playing with my younger sister. <laughs> uh, isn't it great when uh, you look back on times and you realize it's like, hey, I might have been a jerk. I'd never admit it to him, but I might have been a jerk. Uh, oh wow. Oh cool. So the shots actually go on your laser thing. They give you more laser shots? I mean, I haven't known this until now because I haven't had time to look down. What is this? This is just like a score booster? It's like a, hey, take in all the systems of the game because you might have to play it all over again for a hard mode. Okay, this is the most suspicious thing I have ever seen in a video game. It's like they completely forgot about the concept of enemies, which is impossible because they never forget about the concept of quarters. Oh my gosh, this guy almost reminds me of Ray Plaza or something. Okay, I thought he was going to crash into me. Uh, don't tune your set, folks. That's actually the effect. It's supposed to look like that. Okay, I want to keep my power-ups. Uh, at least you only die, like, one level at a time? No. I think you do lose everything at once. Okay. Time to fight this guy back from basics. Oh. Oh, wow. So so I thought that that, like, electricity on the side would be a temporary thing, but nope. That is a permanent thing. Welcome to your new reality, where you are stuck in a small little cage. But I do kind of like that experience it kind of gives. It kind of makes you feel like you really are like a rat in a cage. Okay, that's, that's going to take some doing. That's going to take some doing. I don't think it'll be anywhere near as scary the second time around. Because I'll be expecting it, right? I don't think I can. I don't think I will be. Oh, okay. So it does suck you in. Yeah, we're good. Oh, no, we're not good. Obviously, if you go in, it kills you. That would be kind of crazy if it sucked you in and you got to play like a quote-unquote bonus stage where things were just harder. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Not good. But not bad yet. Not bad yet. Oh, pfft. The second time I saw that thing, I'm like, oh yeah, no, it'll be better the second time. It'll be easy. Wham, wham, wham. Kills me five times over. Yeah, wow. They really understand the psychology of the players. So it's like, as you keep going, then that enemy is just shedding off uh, things like it's clothing. And so it's like, man, you are really feeling like you are making progress. Okay. I don't like this, but I can live with this. Interesting. So if you want to actually damage the boss... Well, either you get clever with your homing shots, or you move on in. Huh. Those rotating things it almost reminds me of a treasure game. If anybody could simulate 3D graphics on an inherently 2D system, it was treasure. That was kind of their call mark. Now, well, I'm not going to say it was crappy, because, like, it was, it was still impressive, and it was something that, in theory, you shouldn't be able to do. But on the other hand, like, as far as 3D goes, it wasn't, like awe-inspiring 3D. It was more like, holy crap, they can do this on a Genesis kind of 3D. 
Which is nice, but... I'd rather have, like, a super fast scrolling background than, like, 3D polygonal robot things. And also, too, they kind of use the 3D sort of conspicuously to actually kind of inspire their bosses. Like, if you play on Red's Dice Maze, then you, there are more than a few bosses that are just, like, a bunch of balls kind of tied together rotating around. And it's like, well, this is, this is nice and all, but, like, you've already done this before. Why, why can't we have a cool more boss, like the orange guy on the plane, where it kind of tilts and tilts as you fight him. And it's like, that was kind of nice and easy, but it was like kind of nice and showy, but it got the point across. And, uh, okay. I'm almost getting a little bored. It's almost time for like a new phase or something. Maybe this is the final phase. That's why it's been for so long, but... Huh. I don't know what's happening next. I'm also not entirely sure what is the optimal strategy here. No bombs or anything. Yeah, that's right. It's, and it's an old school arcade shooter with no bombs. It's like, how are you going to credit feed to the end? And yeah, those doors, not even that hard an attack to dodge. Well, it's like this game reads my mind. It's like, oh, OK, so the player's going to know that the doors aren't a big deal. So what he's going to do is he's going to send even more at them. And they're like, holy cow, don't you think the player's tired by now? And they're like, nope. They put their credits in. They're committed. Oh, I see. And then the two walls come closer, so there's no way you can. Although I'm, well, but those walls are just so slow moving that I can't even, like, get mad. I can't even really call it cheap because they're, like, slow moving. It's like, well, technically it was your fault. And like, if you had just waited, there's not even a time limit. Why are you so, why are you so going so fast, kid? Is this an ending or are we going to space? Like I've been saying this entire time. <laughs> uh, what, what Star Wars film is this trying to rip off? They see a lot of explosions around the time, but how many explosions do you see with a rainbow type explosion? Huh. So that was it, Yukio Abe. I feel like I should know that name. I'm pretty sure I'll recognize him when I go on Wikipedia. But yeah, that was Gunlock. Well, Okay, so it's not quite like a Darius in that, like, at the end, I'm pretty sure I won't ever feel it. Because there were some pretty cool set pieces. Like, when we were in the tube and then the tube started moving, like, super fast, it's like, okay, that was pretty cool. And then that beginning moment when I first realized that I've got the super powerful weapon, uh, like, at all times, that can lock onto the enemy even, that was pretty amazing. And then when we kind of first entered atmosphere, when you've got, like, that whole battalion of ships coming at you, but then they're all in the background, so you can lock on them. That was... That was pretty good. And then the bosses... Well... They were fair. That's about... All I can say. Then again, to, to be fair, it's not like every shoot my game is, like, perfectly memorable. It's not like... Even, even Dodon Pachi, it's like, I don't really remember what those bosses were all about. Man, they knew they're super scaling. This must be late 90s then. The scaling's to 93! 93? That's not even 10 years after Joshi Volleyball and they've got games looking this good? Wow. Wow. Taito and Sega. They are single-handedly keeping the arcades afloat at this point. Well, okay, because Street Fighter released in 95-ish, so Capcom had not yet revolutionized everything with fighting games. So yeah, pretty much Sega and Taito keeping things alive. Couldn't think of a better two video game companies to do so. That was Gunlock. I gotta say, it was a real smooth experience. Oh, it smells blood. Okay, let's reset. Reset.
Nope. Nope. No intro for you. You gotta wait a moment first. So that was Gunlock. Now, it, it's kind of weird. Like, I, I have to compare this most directly to playing through Gradius. Or, not Gradius, Darius. Where, like, it all kind of flows, and it flows kind of smoothly, but it almost flows a little too smoothly that you don't remember anything. Now, Gradius, okay, this far out, I have hazy memories, but mostly I have hazy memories of, like, the backgrounds, how they looked, and then how things sounded. Like, especially that one weird yellowy stage where, like, you have the lady singing an opera in the background, and it's like, okay, that, that's haunting enough that I'll probably remember that forever. But then you get through this game, and it's like, there are actual gameplay moments you kind of feel like, yeah, that first moment when you realize you can lock on, like the first moment when you saw like a ton of enemies in the background, like right there, where you can actually lock on and destroy them before they even get to you. And it's like, that is just so gratifying. And it's like the, those kind of gameplay things that I think that's, that's what you're going to remember. And then yeah, visual style, although... Well, I won't say anything is quite distinctive enough, because, I mean, one nice thing... Well, okay, one downside of having like, a whole bunch of enemy variety is that, like, you don't really build up an identity for the enemies. Like, just to take a contract... Wow. How are they doing that with the scaling and everything? I mean, yeah, it's, it's quote-unquote just 3D transforms, but... I mean, being able to see what it should look like in your mind... That takes more of an artist than a scientist. Dang. Well, more of an artist than a programmer at any rate. But then, uh... Well, I mean, okay. So Gundam, like, the Zaku, it, they fight, like, a crap ton of them. It, they see it over and over, and it becomes this sort of, like, design that is sort of on the subconscious of everyone who's ever watched Gundam. And again, like, it's nice to have that one enemy that is just, it becomes so ubiquitous, it just becomes notorious. Like, Mario has the Goombas, other games have other things, but this game just, it, it doesn't, yeah, I wish the enemy variety, like, they did have that, like, one signature enemy that you just saw a whole bunch of. Like, maybe it could be, like, those green fighter ships or something, because, like, you, you destroy those, like, right away. Maybe it could be, like, fighter ships where, like, you lock on, but you can destroy two of them with one shot or something. Like, it has to be enemies that you can just mow through waves of. And that, that could actually be pretty fun. So, yeah, I kind of wonder if they're just, like, too much in the arcade game mindset. They're like, okay, we gotta make a cool, awesome-looking arcade game. But they don't give any thought to whether people will remember or even care about this game in the future. Now, obviously, their gameplay is, like, solid, and the sprite work is quite frankly art so of course like this is going to survive in the public consciousness people will always want to play this game it's a cool game but people won't ever like think of this game as like a distinctive game when they think of like oh best shoot 'em ups of all time because you got like dodon pachi and it's like there's just something about the design of those ships that just feels immensely iconic but then you take a look at this ship and it is distinctive i suppose but it's not necessarily iconic i don't know then again it doesn't help that like the game like you're hardly ever looking at your ship you're only ever looking at what's gonna crash into you there's so much stuff wow though i kind of wish you could like go in and just extract all those backgrounds and it's like you could just tile your entire house with like those sprite work backgrounds Oh, well, so number five is K-A-T, cat. So that's like, that's like the dark universe version of me, where it's like I'm C-A-T, they're K-A-T. But uh, otherwise, no, not, not an overall remarkable thing. Huh. So that was Gunlock. Not, not a bad experience. In fact, qu quite a very good experience. It just, it's just one of those things that like, now that it's over, it feels far more ephemeral than it did when I was actually playing the game. Still though, if they ever made a sequel or if there's any other games in the series, I'd, I'd like to play them when they come up on a random number generator. But until then, this cat's gotta scat. <laughs>